Hello viewers, everyday life is so exciting. It brings with it numerous responses and surprises. Interestingly, we have our own responses to people, things and events. I have a response to an event, not my own, but that of Lord Byron, a famous romantic poet. Today, I will show you how exactly to walk in beauty and also appreciate it through this poem, She Walks in Beauty. Let me begin by reciting the poem for you. She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron, also known as George Gordon. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all that's best of dark and bright meet her in aspect and her eyes thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies one shade the more one ray the less had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress or slightly lightens over her face where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure how dear their dwelling place and on that cheek and over that brow so soft so calm yet eloquent the smiles that win the tints that glow but tell of days in goodness spent a mind at peace with all below a heart whose love is innocent she walks in beauty is a poem written in 1814 by lord byron one of lord byron's most famous poems it's a lyric poem that describes a woman of much beauty and elegance. The poem appears to be told from the viewpoint of the third person omniscient narrator. There are hints as to the identity of the narrator, but it is believed that the narrator may be Byron himself. The poem is said to have been inspired by the vision of Byron's cousin by marriage in a morning gown. It was the first of several poems to be set to Jewish tunes from the synagogue by Isaac Nathan, which were published as Hebrew Melodies in 1815. A quick look about the poet. George Gordon Byron, also known as Lord Byron, was one of the most influential writers of his time. He wrote the poem in 1814 and published it in a collection, Hebrew Melodies. It was the first of several poems to be set to Jewish tunes from the synagogue by Isaac Nathan. Byron was born on 22nd January 1788 to Captain Mad Jack. Byron and Catherine Gordon after losing their father at an early age and inheriting the family title and estate, he went to Harrow School and then to Cambridge. He died of malaria in April 1824. Although Byron is known as one of the major poets of the Romantic period, his work has been faulted by a number of writers. According to the poet W. H. Oden, in his book Tyre's Hand and other essays, Byron's poems need to be read very rapidly because if one slows down, the poetry vanishes. The feeling seems superficial, the rhyme forced, the grammar all over the place. While the 19th century British poet Matthew Arnold considered Byron along with Wordsworth 
first and preeminent in actual performance among the english poets of this century he holds a similar opinion of byron's technical merit writing in a preface to poetry of byron arnold states as a poet he has no fine and exact sense for word structure and rhythm he has not the artist's nature and gifts she walks in beauty is one of byron's most famous works it's a lyric poem that describes a woman of great beauty and elegance the poem was inspired by actual events in byron's life on the evening of june 11 1814 byron attended a party with his friend james wedderburn webster at the london home of lady sarah caroline sitwell among the guests was the beautiful anne beatrix wilmot the wife of baron's first cousin her exquisite looks dazzled byron and inspired him to write the poem she wore a black dress because she was in mourning the poem was performed by the golden goblets as madrigal on season 3 of glee in the episode on my way in 2008 a film disgrace chose the poem as a main theme song in the film now let's go to understand what is a lyric poem lyric poetry is usually meant to be sung or spoken with music behind it music of lyre lyric poetry is a form of poetry with rhyme schemes that express personal feelings poetry uses word sounds order and meter to express an idea in a fashion that is not a simple exposition she walks in beauty is considered to have been byron's tribute to the beauty of art a quick look at the summary the poem is about an unnamed woman in the first stanza she walks in beauty she is not just beautiful but walks in beauty which enhances her beauty and becomes more dynamic she is really striking with movement her beauty is compared to the night and starry nights things that are dark but beautiful the night sky has no clouds and has lot of stars her beauty is flawless the brightness of the stars pure and sweet all that's best of dark and bright come together in this stanza both in her facial expression and her overall appearance were seen her eyes create a harmony between dark and bright byron's setting up a binary or opposition between dark and bright neither is considered better or worse than each other both have aspects that are best everything that's great about dark and bright is toned down to more tender and less intense than the daylight since byron is talking as night time it should be moonlight night and starry night
The woman's beauty is so balanced and perfect that one shade more or one ray less would mess everything up. Her beauty and grace are so hard to define that they are nameless. This nameless grace is seen in every lock of her black hair, which is referred to as every raven tress and it lightens her face. This contrast is clearly shown. He tells the reader in line 3 that she combines the best of dark and bright. Bright here thus turn opposites into compeers working together to celebrate beauty. The woman's smiles and her healthy blushes shows that she is quiet and rather elegant. Even though she is quiet and calm, her smiles and blushes are eloquent. Her face is expressive in spite of her quietness. Her smiles reflect all the good times that the woman has spent doing good deeds. The woman's serenity and smiles reflect the calmness of her own mind and it is at peace with all below, people on earth. Her life is innocent. This would mean she is not in love with anyone or her love is pure and innocent. The third stanza shows her inner beauty. The expression on the woman's face shows how serenely sweet her thoughts are. It is an accurate reflection of what's going on in her mind, which is the dwelling place of her thoughts. Another binary set of contrasts her exterior expression and her interior thoughts. The sweetness suggests that her mind is pure and innocent. Dear in this context means both precious and valuable. Here's the analysis of the poem. First things first, the theme. The theme of the poem is the woman's exceptional beauty, internal as well as external. The first stanza praises her physical beauty. The second and the third stanzas praise both her physical and spiritual or intellectual beauty. Here's an analysis of the rhyme scheme and meter. The rhyme scheme of the first is AB, AB, AB. The second stanza is CD, CD, CD. And the third is EF, EF, EF. The meter is iambic tetrameter. Each line has stressed and unstressed syllables of four pairs. It has a pattern in the first two lines but the last six lines has nine syllables. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. But in the fourth line instead of starry with an unstressed syllable it starts with a stressed syllable. It is called metrical inversion. Meet in her aspect and her eyes. It looks like a deliberate break in the rhyme that calls for attention to the steadiness of the rest of the poem. It is pattern inverted or reversed. What is enjambment here? Carrying the sense 
of one line verse over the next line without a pause is enjambment. It links the first line with the second. No pause after night. The poem begins with the image of a woman who walks in beauty like the night. The reader should wonder as to how she could be found. The speaker says that the night is cloudless and that the stars illuminate the sky. The imagery is brought in. Light and darkness. This line clears the reader's mind. This is known as enjambment. The poem opens without punctuation and Byron draws attention and emphasis the counter mechanism in the second line. Poets use this mechanism together with enjambment to get the attention to certain words. The fourth line has the word, it is an important word for the entire poem. Opposites meet in this woman, just as enjambment and a change in meter are joined together as mechanisms in this poem. The unlikely pair of darkness and light meet in this woman. What is alliteration? It is a figure of speech to enhance the appeal of the poem while you read. Cloudless climes, starry skies, day denies, had half which waves serenely sweet, so soft, so hard whose the second line of cloudless climes and starry skies. The poet uses alliteration, the light and dark contrast. The light and dark appear in her face and in her eyes. Her face has light skin and has dark hair and her eyes are dark in the iris in contrast with the white cornea of her eye. Here's the critical analysis. Simile. One line has the basic simile of the poem. The beauty of the woman is like the night. Sibilance is the repeated sound that are very musical to the ear. It is soothing like cloudless climbs in line 2. The clanned S sound alliteration is used. In line 11, thoughts serenely sweet express also gives a soothing and serene feeling. Synesthesia, mixing up of the senses like the tender light. Tender describes a tactile sensation. Light is something you see. The woman's beauty is so overwhelming that the poet's senses and feels things he usually sees. Personification. Heaven is personified in line 6. The sky cannot really deny anyone or anything. So the poet is giving attributes of a human being. Metaphor. In line 12, Byron uses a metaphor to describe the woman's mind. He says that it is the dwelling place of her thoughts. Synecdoche is a poetic convention to substitute a part for the whole. 
to talk about a person's heart feeling a certain way. Heart is a part of the whole body of a person. It looks like the speaker is in love with the woman he describes. In the end, the final line dispels the reader's suspicion. The word innocent describes her personality almost as much as her exterior beauty. A look at the symbols. Raven hair is a metaphor. We hear dark hair describing as raven. The line 7 is perfectly balanced between opposites. Shade and ray, more and less. One shade more means if she were any darker. But one ray, the less also means if she were any darker. It sounds like the two opposite things but really the meaning of both is the same. The beautiful woman is a brunette, pale and blonde. He praises the beauty of a woman with raven, black hair. He also says that real beauty requires a contrast of light and dark or day and night, smiles and blushes. The beauty's pretty face is a reflection of the interior goodness. The poet remarks on both her smiles and her blushes, external responses to internal moods or feelings. Line 11, the woman's thoughts are personified, express things in her face. Line 14 and 15, woman's smiles and tints, which are blushes in the cheeks, are personified when he describes them as eloquent. Line 16, the smiles and the blushes are personified Again, they tell of the woman who has spent her time doing good deeds. The aspect of woman and femininity. She walks in beauty is completely focused on one woman. She is totally objectified by the speaker because she is not named the speaker worshipped her and idolizes and compares it to things that are so vast and unusual. We have dealt with the thematic aspects as well as the technical structure of the poem. Here's a quick recap of all that we learnt. The poem talks of the beauty of woman in mourning at superficial level, but it actually means that beauty is not just physical, in fact spiritual and also intellectual. A comparison with the stars in dark sky is drawn to that effect. Technically, the rhyme scheme AB, AB, AB is repeated for rhythm because it's a lyric poem and hence the music. Also, the metaphor and the similes in the poem are used to heighten poetic value. This poem can be used as an excellent example, in fact a perfect combination of rhyme scheme, meter and also for its lofty ideal. Friends, until we meet again, do dwell on the poem. Happy learning, see you very soon.